Hi everyone, today is September 4th, 2019, it's a Wednesday, and it's the second day that school has started in my part of the world, so in 2019-2020 school year. And for the, today's stream, we're doing what we titled it, and I think this is sort of the format we're going to keep for uh, all of school year for this year. Uh, we're calling it uh, Drop in Math Tutoring Session 2019-2020, number one. All right, let's do some math, open discussion. Uh, welcome back. Hope everyone had a fantastic, fantastic summer vacation. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do a little bit of prep work down here while we wait for people to hop on the chat, uh, hop on the stream. I'm just popping out the chat right now and we're live streaming and, um, and that's about it uh, we've done we did a few of these last year like I, I forgot I've lost I lost the number I don't know how many we did we started off in some you know a format where um, we're covering certain topics and we might do that as well we might just say okay for this stream we're going to cover preliminary preliminary grade 10 material or grade 11 or do some grade 12 material and during exam times we'll do review of grade 10 grade 9 grade 8 even elementary school we'll do we'll do different things last year it was more open uh, I'm gonna keep on doing these open live streams until we get some kind of structure going on if people are okay with doing this format we'll continue it if people want specific topics or specific uh, years covered we'll do that okay and um, and that's about it so we're just going to wait until people show up and if you have questions let us know it is an open discussion so in general we do talk about math science biology chemistry different related material but if a math question comes up uh, that takes precedence over everything else okay that takes precedence over everything else um, and um, one other thing uh, earlier well during the midsummer so i had a hardware crash right one of my hard drives my main editing hard drive went kaput and um, in the last few weeks uh, I've sort of backed things up I, I got access to it I could read it I couldn't write on it so I got access to it I backed stuff up I transferred stuff to another hard drive internal hard drive that I have and I'm going to start editing on uh, so edited videos should start coming sooner rather than later okay one of the first things we're going to do is uh, do a little uh, personal finance, ASMR math stuff related. And uh, we're selling some comic books on eBay right now. So uh, I've created a spreadsheet uh, where uh, I've entered a lot of this data in, how much we sold the stuff, you know, how much shipping was, how much eBay fees were, eBay shipping fees were, PayPal fees were. Uh, if there are any uh, refunds I have to do, where I have to do one refund, it looked like the uh, one comic I sent out anyway was damaged during shipping, I believe anyway, but either way, uh, I did a, a partial refund, uh, but everything else uh, we've been selling, everyone's been happy with it, so they've been leaving positive feedback. I know some people have been uh, grabbing some stuff uh, because they want to support the work and whatnot. Uh, let me actually do this here these are if you want to keep track because we can definitely uh, talk about do a little mathematics as these things get knocked out right uh, so that would be super cool hey Casey Starsky how you guys doing I was I was on my eBay page there's stuff ending right now oh you know what oh, that, that's the item did I link the item I don't know what I linked let's see what I linked Okay, you know what? I think we want this. Let's see. If this is gonna. Yeah, this is the shorter version. I think anyway. Here's a shorter version. Okay, that should do it. Zare, good afternoon, brother. How are you doing? Yay! <laughs> Mathematics is back. <laughs> I'm psyched for uh, this year's math session. I got some distant learning education people. We're gonna start these live streams from the get-go, right? From the school beginning. 
So it'd be cool to see if there's anyone coming in at the beginning of the school year and having questions related to content from a beginning of the school year and see how they progress. And I'm going to treat, hopefully I'll try to remember who's who and what type of questions are asking. Maybe they'll remind me. You know me and names. I'm very good with faces and situations and stuff like this, but names just throw me off, right? Um, but hopefully we can keep track of how people are progressing. And the way I'm going to treat it is the same way I treat the rest of my students, which is basically if they ask me a question, we'll try to answer that question, but we're going to be planting seeds for future years coming on, right? Because I want to prep them for higher grades, not specifically what they're asking, but what is to come, right? I find that to be the best way to teach mathematics, both on uh, Lonely Piggy, how are you doing? Bonjour, bonjour. Uh, Rick John Nova, what's going on, Chicho? I was just watching the video you put out earlier. I really enjoy your time. Thanks, brother. <laughs> Thanks, Nova. Loving it. The, the, the patio yesterday, uh, for those of you who might not know, we did a sort of an economics, uh, personal finance video yesterday on the patio. And it looks beautiful, really. That's one thing I love about doing the gardening and dealing with plants. All of a sudden, you can create a scenery, like just create an amazing space where you can just go sit there and stand there and go, oof, this is nice. This is nice, right? I had one person, one person commented on uh, on the YouTube video, I think. It wasn't the BitChute, it was a YouTube video. The BitChute doesn't get very, new, very many views right now from the two YouTube. It's all commented on the YouTube uh, that they thought the background was sort of a scene, uh, sort of an image that I had put behind me. And then when I got up and I went out there like, whoa, what? Double O negative, Chicho, good. I need some chill vibes while doing homework. Nice, nice, nice. School just started. School just started. Fun. I'm watching uh, some of these comic books sell. Uh, some are going higher than what I expected. Some are going for lower than what I expected. Uh, it's crazy. Like just to give you an example. Uh, because this is math related to a certain degree right the first appearance of uh, i've got the whole lot of comics on ebay right now they're ending while we're doing this live stream right uh, so it's cool looking at it while we're you know just being here right but the first appearance of this character called cletus cassidy in amazing spider-man 344 sold for 91 dollars i think that it sell for um, um <laughs> this is old okay so the first appearance sold for 91 dollars and it was in you know 9 point, 9 .6, 9 .8 condition which is very high grade okay the second appearance of this character and it's the origin sort of with the previous one uh, which is a little bit lower grade, 9.4, sold for $15, right? So looking at the differences between these things is brilliant to me. That's where mathematics for me, uh, some of the stuff it really kicks in where you can start uh, getting a feel for what's going on uh, in sort of an economic front and demand and supply and and hype and uh, and whatnot it, it's amazing to me right mask of raven how are you doing literally just a comic in the mail as your stream started nice captain america 290 first appearance of mother night which was mother night hey chicho how's that doing good lions thank you very much mother night mother night captain america 290 uh, reminder that it's Sub September, uh, everyone. Half price subscriptions, but Chicho still gets the full amount. Oh, really? Cool. Thank you for the reminder, Casey. Uh, great time to show uh, uh, show support if you're able. Yeah, if you're able, fantastic. I would greatly appreciate it. I've had a few expenses pop up 
<laughs> Summer. <laughs> daughter of oh, daughter of Red Skull is Mother Night. Cool, nice buy. And that, uh, depending on how they treat things, um, because they've been uh, the comic book industry in a big way. Uh, Spider Beans, how you doing? In a big way, they're pushing uh, female characters. They have they started about basically 2010 11 12 13 it really started kicking into gear where a lot of female characters were taking on the roles of um, previously male characters and daughters were coming up and stuff like this and they're making their way into the marvel universe right so some of the comic books that people were like oh man i can't believe they're doing this blah 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 they're fetching amazing prices, right, in terms of investing and stuff like this. So nice buy, because the odds are the daughter of Red Skull will make an appearance somewhere in the, in the Marvel Universe, right, or Disney Universe, and uh, you can bet your bottom that people are going to be chasing it, okay? People are going to be chasing it, right? It's, it's crazy. It's an it's amazing industry. It's so cool. I had a friend over recently, uh, just the last few days, and he plays the market and stuff like this. And uh, uh, I showed him what I was doing, and he's like, oh, so it's like stocks. I go, yeah, it's just like stocks, right? There is storage fee, if you want to think about it that way, that you're taking on, but there's also entertainment value that you're taking on. I just bought a 9.6 CGC of Micronauts for 50. Oh, dude, that's a great price. Yesterday, too. First ever slab. Yeah, and that's a great price. Like, just getting a CGC would have been... I don't know, in my part of the world, it costs like $35, $40 Canadian. Oh, yeah, you're talking US dollars, too. So I don't know if that's a great price. Sounds like a great price to me. I see some slab stuff, CGC stuff, of comics that people aren't chasing, they're just randoms, go for like $5, right? Like not, I've seen CGC 9.8 go for $5, shipping would have been like 20 so $25 you get a CGC 9.8, and there was a few of them that went for 10 15 in the teens. Uh, so if you could combine shipping, you're actually buying down the pipeline CGC book for less than what it would cost you to send one in if you knew it was that great, right? It's interesting. I, I, as you can tell, I'm, uh, I'm very excited about crunching these numbers that we've gotten off eBay. We've gotten, uh, we've been selling books on eBay for about two months now, right? So far, I mean, after today and tomorrow session, we would have sold around 80 bucks, right? So if we sold around 80 bucks, then w that's a pretty good number. We can start doing some crunching and uh, start trying to get a feel for uh, what the expenses are, what the ratios are, what the return on profit might be, um, and what all the fees are and stuff like this. I've, I've got my spreadsheet, this big spreadsheet with different columns going on. I love spreadsheet data, right? Mathematics, mathematics. Initially, I wasn't even going to start these math live streams until end of September because that, that's when things start kicking in. But because I was looking at the data, I'm like, let's do math, let's get going, let's start it up. Uh, this is me rambling on, by the way, for like 15 minutes. Uh, and keep in mind, if you have any math questions, uh, ask away and uh, we'll try to address any issues you might be having. Right. Fun. The big book today that's going to be selling is uh, Amazing Spider-Man 361. Right. The first big book sold, which was uh, 344 which was the first appearance of Cletus. 361 is big as well, huge in the comic book realm, right? Fun. 
who's starting? Is there anyone from high school here? Or is everybody uh, in college, university, or just chilling? By the way, I picked some uh, blackberries yesterday. I'm cooking, I'm making blackberry jam right now in segments. This morning I've, I had two pots going. I had uh, how many pounds? 15 pounds of blackberries. Yeah, 15 pounds of blackberries cooking today. So I have two pots going. I've reduced them. Uh, the next step, so when I'm doing this, I just turn it off. I put it on the side. You can do that with jam, right? You don't have to continue the whole series in one shot, right? So have the pots sitting, and then when we're done with the stream, I'm going to go and mill them, and then cook them up, and then jar up, right? Take you true. Are you a professor? No. No, no, no. Uh, I, I ended my academic career uh, soon after getting my bachelor's in geophysics and mathematics. If x squared plus 5x plus a equals x plus b squared, what is a and b? a and b. So that's, uh, when you're doing that, you're assuming it's a perfect square. Uh, so if you're assuming it's a perfect square, so unfortunately that one doesn't work out evenly, easily for us, right? So let's do these. By the way, this is the beginning of the year. Even for me, it takes a little bit of time to get back into the groove of mathematics, right? Because what you'll notice, uh, what, I, what every, every educator, every teacher, every parent, every student notices, anyone that's going in school knows this, that deals with the school system knows this. When you come back after summer break, you've forgotten a lot of stuff, right? Or it's in the back burner, you need reminders. And it takes a little bit of time to get back into the groove, right? So, mask of Raven, let's check this out. x squared plus 5x plus a. x squared plus 5x plus a is equal to x mi minus or plus? Uh, plus b. Plus b squared, right? So, this is a simple trinomial, this guy. This is called a simple trinomial. Okay. Try means three terms, right? First term, second term, third term. And terms are separated by plus and minus, right? So whenever you have plus and minus between ex terms, right? That's what you call them, trinomial. And nomial is derived from polynomial polynomial okay and what is a polynomial polynomial is a function uh, i'm having trouble simplifying compound compound fractional expression you want to simplify it here let me write this down uh, yours will be perps i think yours should be easier than mask of ravens because that's not a perfect square but i'm going to go through a whole process of explaining what a perfect square is do a simple one and then we'll try to get the answer for this one, right? I'm still thinking about it. <laughs> so x plus 1 over x plus 2 plus... Okay, so the way you've written it, brackets are your friends. Uh, friend, okay? So you wrote this like this. 1 divided by x plus 2 divided by x. Right? So my question to you is, is this, this divided by x, where this guy is in the top, or is this, this, 1 over x plus 2 over x? Which one is it? Does it make a difference? Let's see if it makes a difference, right? The first one should be easy because that x squared will cancel when you expand. Da, 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 da. x squared will cancel when you expand. Yeah, I mean, you can do this. Here. This one, you expand this, and you put it in the same form. Okay, hold on a second. While we're waiting for this answer, right? It might not matter, but because you wrote it out this way, I need you to express it 
property, right? So if you expand this, this guy, x plus b squared is equal to x plus b times x plus b, right? x squared, if you expand this, becomes plus x bx plus bx plus b squared, right? Because you go this times this times this, this. That's foiling, right? Combine these two guys, you're going to get bx plus bx is 2bx, 2bx, right? So what we have right now is we've got a trinomial equals a trinomial. Easy peasy, right? Because this guy, here, I'll write, rewrite it up here. x squared plus 5x plus a has to equal x squared plus 2bx plus b squared. So this is three terms. This is three terms, right? They're both three terms. So if I, for example, if I give you this, 2 to the power of x is equal to 2 to the power of 3. What's x? What's x? 2 to the power of x is equal to 2 to the power of 3. This is something that comes up. And sometimes I ask grade 12s this because this peaks his head when you're dealing with logarithms, exponential logarithmic functions, which is in grade 12, right? You know, 2 to the power of x is equal to 2 to the power of 3. x has to be 3. This is like a place marker, right? If this whole thing is equal to this whole thing, that's a 2 and that's a 2, then that has to be a 3. So x is equal to 3. There's no choice, right? This is the same deal. x squared equals x squared. So we're okay there. 5x has to equal positive. I, I should be inc including the sign in front of the number. Sorry if I'm not reading any of the chat. I'm just going to cover this up. So positive 5x has to equal positive 2bx, right? So if 5x is equal to 2bx, you divide by x, right? Take both of those out. And then b is equal to 5 over 2, right? If b is equal to 5 over 2, then b squared is 25 over 4, right? And a has to equal b squared, so a is equal to 5 over 2. Right? Because what you're going to do is going to say positive a has to equal positive b squared, so a has to equal b squared, but what was b? b was 5 over 2, right? So b is equal to, so a is going to be 5 over 2 squared, which is 25 over 4, and a is 25 over 4, sorry, the other way around. A is 25 over 4, and B is 5 over 2, right? It's just place markers. The first one on the top left. The first one on the top left. The first one, the first one on the top left. Maybe, oh, your left, that's right. It's your left, it's my right. Uh, the first one on the top left. Okay, we'll, we'll deal with it right now. Double or negative. My problem when doing my college algebra is I get the hang of solving a set of problems. Then it seems like the next step set has completely different rules for how to solve it. Um, the rules of mathematics don't change. You shouldn't think of it as different rules of solving it. You should th think about it as a different process. It's an easier way to solve it, right? Like the rules keep changing, and I'm just supposed to know why. Here's the thing that, again, that one again, it's not the rules that are changing. It's the method you go about solving the problem is changing. Because the rules of mathematics are the same, right? It's just based on five axioms, right? So adding is adding, subtracting is subtracting. There's rules associated with adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, the equal sign, right? As long as you know how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide, and move around an equal sign, you can do almost anything you want, right? The rest of mathematics, is the rest of mathematics to, to a large degree is conceptual, is, is taking that and applying it in the real world or look, applying it to a data set or applying it to a function. 
I could be exaggerating here a little bit. There might be mathematicians. <laughs> I think Master Raven is pretty good at math. So he might be going to each other stop saying that, right? But I'm generalizing, I'm simplifying it, right? It's not the rules that change, it's your approach to solving the problem that changes. And that comes with practice, right? That comes with understanding the problem, not trying to memorize how to solve the problem, but understanding what the problem is asking you. Yo, Chicho, love your stuff for a long time. Keep it up, man. But you will do sneaky. Sneaky walrus is zero. Let's do this one. Okay. So we're trying to simplify this. Let me find the original. And then 1 over x and then plus 2. And I'm assuming the plus 2 is like this. Is everyone okay with this one? I hope everyone's okay with this one. I was going to take it down a different route, show you how you factor a perfect polynomial and you couldn't factor that, so you have to expand that and link it up. But we'll skip that, I guess. Right? We went to the to the meat of it right away. So let's do the question Perps is asking. So we got, we got, we got x plus, and then this guy, right? Yeah, that guy. So 1 over x plus 2 over x, and then we got minus 1 over x, minus 1 over x plus 2. I'm assuming it's like that. I'm assuming, uh, yeah, you put a space between them, right? I'm assuming this one is not supposed to be this because you put a space between these guys when you typed it, uh, right? So how do we approach this? We just want to simplify this, right? Sneaky wall versus zero. Thank you for the tier one sub on a, what's it called, Casey? It was called uh, uh, September, September day, everyone. September month, everyone, I guess. Uh, let's check this out. Da, da, da. Simplify, yeah. So how do we go about this? Well, I would take care of this first. There's multiple ways of doing this, by the way, right? But I would take care of this guy first because this is the ugliest one. Right? So what you want to do is take care of the ugly guys first. So I'm going to take this. You can do it on the side in general. And whenever you've got problems where you're going to be doing multiple steps going down, right? Because we put out a video where we said, recognize the pattern, right? You sort of want to simplify it going like this, right? The least I could do for the literal years of peaceful sleep and relaxation you're probably right? My pleasure, man. I hope you didn't have too many Chicho dreams teaching you mathematics. Thanks, Chicho. That makes more sense to me now. Then you'll see that is not the spoon that bends. It is only for yourself. Do not try to bend the spoon. <laughs> too funny. So let's do this one on the side, right? Take this guy and let's simplify it here, right? So this, whenever you get fractions on top of fractions, right? Write them out sideways as a division statement, right? So you can do it here. We'll do it here because I don't think this is going to take all the way down here. So you can go like this. 1 over x plus 2 divided by x. And that what that means is 1 over x plus 2 division change to multiplication and flip the number term variable after ever expression, right? And you flip this, it becomes times 1 over x. So the bottom here is 1 over x plus 2 times x. Right? Okay. Make sense? So this guy is really that guy. So this now becomes x plus 1 over x plus 2 times x minus 1 over x plus 2. Now, depending on what grade you're in, okay, because you get this in grade 10 in my part of the world, you also get it in grade 11 and 12. If you're in grade 10, you don't have to worry about this one thing. But we're going to do it because we're laying down a foundation for grade 11 and 12, right? Whenever you get fractions with variables in them, okay, the thing you always have to do on the side is... Uh, Note your restrictions. Okay. Thank you for the follow. I couldn't read what bottom here, right? 
you have to make a note of your restrictions okay so uh, so what we do is the restriction we have in mathematics okay is no dividing by zero right we can't divide by zero in mathematics we've talked about this right one over zero is undefined you can't divide by zero if you want me to go over that let me know we'll go over it down here I'm assuming everybody appreciates that right now and they know why right but because we can't divide by zero in mathematics whenever you get a fraction with variables in it and variables just mean things that can vary you have to put restrictions on that variable because it can vary right I hope that makes sense right 1 over x x can be almost anything right there's only one thing really that x can't be what can't x be here well the denominator can never be zero so whenever you get something like this take the denominator and say x cannot equal zero that was easy because the denominator was x over here this is a complete fraction as well so again x can't be zero over here this is a fraction within a fraction so we have another fraction here so take the denominator for this fraction and say x plus 2 cannot equal 0 and you bring the 2 over so x cannot equal negative 2 so we have two restrictions if you had other fractions with variables in the denominator you would do it for every single one right so for example if we have another one here saying plus 1 over 3x minus 1 you would say 3x minus 1 cannot equal 0 solve for this you get x cannot equal 1 over 3 1 over 3 right so for any fraction where you have a variable in the denominator you write down your restrictions okay this wasn't in there so we're going to keep that out and by the way the reason you're doing this is is because in general you're talking about functions right you're talking about a mathematical expression that relates to a world situation or something imagined right something you want to analyze and whatever it is whatever system you're looking at you have to know what your restrictions are you really do right because every system has restrictions limitations okay and for this system our restrictions our limitations is x cannot equal zero and x cannot equal negative two so we should have done this up here right in the first step before we perceive crunching anything okay and keep this in mind in the crunching process if you end up getting additional fractions with things in the denominator then those cannot equal zero as well okay so so sort of continues you always have to keep an eye on it so now we want to simplify this. Whenever you want to simplify this, this is just adding fractions, right? If I if I told you what's two plus five over three plus one over seven, you would say, oh, I'm adding fractions. I'm going to write two as two over one because everything can be over a one. It's a fraction. And what do you do when you're adding fractions? You're looking for a common denominator. What's the common denominator between one, three, and seven? Twenty-one, right? And then you ask yourself, would you multiply 1 to give you 21? You multiply it by 21. So 21 times 2 is 42. Plus, multiply 3 by 7 to get 21. So you multiply 5 by 7, which is 5 times 7 is 35. Plus, multiply 3 by a 7 by 3 to get 21. So multiply the top by 3, you get plus 3. And by the way, the reason we're allowed to do this is because we're not changing the value the weight of this expression all we're doing is we're making it look different how are we making it look different we're making it to become one expression where they have a common denominator right so the only number that we can multiply anything by without changing its weight its value is one right so we're really multiplying this number by one this number by one this number by one but because we want to make all three of them look different we're choosing what this one looks like this one here is 21 over 21 
we're multiplying this expression by 21 over 21 because that way it puts them under the same denominator. This one we're multiplying by 7 over 7. This one we're multiplying by 3 over 3, right? Now keep in mind, we're not multiplying each one of these by different numbers. We're multiply multiplying them all by 1. 1, 1, 1. But the 1 looks different for each one because they had a different denominator and we were trying to bring them all up, raise them all up to the same common denominator. And you can't multiply anything by other than 1 if you want to keep the value the same, right? So if you multiply the bottom by 21, then we have to multiply the top by 21. Bottom by 7, top by 7, bottom by 3, top by 3. The weight of this expression hasn't changed and it looks different. Then you can add all the stuff, right? So what are we? 2 plus 3 is 5, 5 plus 5 is 0, and you put a 1 up here. So that's 80 over 21, right? 77 plus 3 is 80 over 21. 80 over 21 is the same as this, right? But this is cleaner. This is what we're hoping to do with this. Make it look cleaner, right? More condensed, simplified. Let's do it. What we did here is exactly what we're gonna do here, but they just happen to have variables. So let's convert them all to fractions. You don't need to necessarily do this every time, but you can if you're starting out. But that's a fraction, that's a fraction, over one, over one. 2 over 1 is the same thing as 2, right? So we just put them all as fractions. That way, visually, it looks like we're dealing with fractions, right? And then you ask yourself, what's the common denominator? Well, we need a 1, but 1 is a 1. 1 can be anywhere. If I write down 2, I could write down 2 over 1 times 1 divided by 1. That's still just 2. So 1 you could put anywhere, right? So we don't have to worry about the 1. We need an x plus 2, and we need an x. Here's another x. But if we have an x here, we've got this x is already covered. If this was x squared, then we would need another x. So we would need an x squared, not just an x. Because an x squared covers x, but an x doesn't cover an x squared. We need another x, right? right? But this isn't an x squared. It's just an x. And then a 1. So common denominator is x plus 2 times x. Right? If that's the case, then what do we multiply this guy by to give us x plus 2 times x? We multiply it by x plus 2 times x. So we've got to multiply top by x plus 2 times x. Right? I hope I can write this in one row. Well, let's do it. So this becomes x times x plus 2 times x plus and you can simplify that here we'll do it right down the step here as well x plus 2 times x so this x times x is x squared right and then x squared you can multiply it in and you would for these types of things you multiply them all in because you can combine like terms at the end most likely in the top that's why you can combine compress them right we added 42 35 and 2 3 3 to get 80 right so over here that's going to be x times x is x squared and then you multiply the x squared inside so that becomes x cubed plus 2x squared this guy we just multiplied by 1 to give us x plus 2 times x we didn't change it apologies if the thing is not focusing right away Right? It's all white, so my camera freaks out a little bit. So that just becomes plus 1, because we don't have to multiply that by anything. That is that thing, right? Minus, what do we multiply x by to give us x plus 2 times x? We multiply it by x plus 2. Okay. Now, whenever you're simplifying these types of expressions, whenever you have a negative sign, okay, whatever comes after the negative sign when you're expanding it, put it in brackets. Because that negative sign is going to affect everything inside the brackets, right? So what do we multiply x by to give us x plus 2 times x? We multiply it by x plus, 
uh, x plus 2, right? So it's going to be 1 times x plus 2. And over here, what do we multiply 1 by to give us x plus 2 times x? Well, we multiply it by x plus 2 times x. So it's going to be 2 times x plus 2 times x. Okay. Let me move these over here. Our restrictions were, and you usually go right like this, restriction x cannot equal 0 and x cannot equal negative 2. Okay. Which really doesn't matter to us right now because this doesn't equal anything. Okay. Let me kill this because we're going to need the space. Side waves. Let's make them negative 2. Negative 2 so it shows more clearly. Intrepid, how are you doing? Hey, Chicho, long time no see. Hope everything's well. Everything's well. School year started. I'm all excited. As, as if you can't tell, um, Speedy Gonzalez. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Let's go through this. So what do we multiply 1 by to give you x plus 2 times x? We multiply by x, two, x plus 2 times x. So that's going to be 2 times x plus 2 times x. Okay? Let's simplify these things. Because we simplified this one already. That one doesn't simplify. It's plus 1. Negative 1 multiplies in. Now you don't need to put the negative there. I never do. We're doing it for, what's it called? No, oh, I won't erase it. You can if you want. I have students that do that, right? But you don't need to. One is a one. So if you have a negative here, there's a one in front. A two, there's a one in front of multiple. So two multiple. So that's going to be minus x minus two, right? And then we're going to multiply the these guys together. Multiplication doesn't matter which order you do it in. The one is imaginary. The one is imaginary. Perfect. Thank you, perps. The one is imaginary. Right? It's not a it's not a imaginary number like complex numbers, the square root of negative one or anything like this. It's just you you imagine it's there. Right? It's a placeholder. Right? Now multiplication, some people make the mistake thinking that they have to multiply in order. You don't. For example, 2 times 3 times 4 is the same thing as 2 times 4 times 3 is the same thing as 3 times 2 times 4, right? 6, six times 4 is 24. 8, eight times 3 is 24. Six, 6 times 4 is 24, right? Multiplication order doesn't matter. As long as there's no plus and minus between the things, right? So we've got three things multiplied together. I'm going to multiply these two together first. 2 times x is 2x, and then 2x multiplies this and this. 2x times x is going to be plus 2x squared. 2x times 2 is going to be plus 4x. The last step you need to do in this is simplify this expression. Combine like terms. And the way I do it, I scan this thing and I combine highest powers first, right? So I got an x cubed. There is no other x cubed. So this is x plus 2 times x. There is no other x cubed, so it's just x cubed. You got a positive 2x squared. So we're going to combine it with other x squares, right? Here's a positive 2x squared. So 2x squared plus 2x squared is 4x squared plus 4x squared. We got a number 1, and we got a negative 2, and that's it for the numbers, right? But I'm not going to write that here right now, because I want to have it as descending order. And I know there's another x here, so I'm going to triangle this, so I know to combine it with this, right? So the two circles I got to combine, and the two triangles I have to combine. Let's do the triangles first. Negative x plus 4 x is positive 3x, 1 plus 2x, oh sorry, 1 minus 2 is going to be negative 1, right? You want to express your final answer in descending order in general. So this guy simplified this ugly looking thing, really. It really is ugly. It's not really ugly. I like all visual mathematics stuff, but it's it's messy, maybe, right? You can express this like this. 
And in general, you leave that alone. You don't multiply that in. Okay. The only reason we multiplied all these in because things were going to combine to simplify it further. Okay. That simplified is this. That's a nice expression. I like it. it looks pretty. Condensed. Things are descending. Right. I hope that helped. Sweet. Thanks, Tucho. My pleasure, perps. My pleasure. This is the most complicated question I've had so far this year. The year just started yesterday. <laughs> I haven't started working with my grade 12s yet. Only started working with uh, elementary school, school students so far. And uh, one high school as well. A couple of high schools. Early on is kombucha. I got kombucha going. I got a little bit of dark chocolate going. And what do I drink the most? I got my tea going. do some random random other streams in the next today and tomorrow we'll see we have a barbecue going on tomorrow I'm gonna do a lot of prep food prepping today I don't think I'm gonna have time to live stream because I'm also cooking making blackberry jam <laughs> so today I'm making blackberry jam prepping marinating meat for barbecue tomorrow tomorrow I'm gonna do a full-on barbecue up a lot of shish kebabs. Oh, I'm gonna erase this. The great thing with the video is you can just go back and pause it and copy it all down if you need to. Take a screenshot. Right? Should we take a look at what else sold? Does a comic book for? Let's take a look. Let's take a look. We could do some uh, mathematics on that stuff right now. How oh, many more sold? Ooh, three more sold. Let's check it out. 35. Wow, wow, wow. So, Amazing Spider Man. Let me give you the prices on them so far. Amazing Spider Man 344 sold for 96. That went above what I thought it was going to go, but that thing started kicking up in price big time in the last year. A year ago, you could have bought this thing for 10 bucks, right? Amazing Spider Man 345 sold for 15. That was a deal and a half, okay? Uh, the 344, that's a going price now. Uh, 346, um, that's, these are like going price. This is the first time, I didn't know this. I looked this up afterwards. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man 346 is actually the first time you see Venom's tongue like this. So it's the first appearance really of the Venom tongue in this format, I believe. And it's Eric Larson doing it. And the Green Gook, and the Green Gook I believe is the, uh, the byproduct of Venom eating, right? It's residues, poop, if you think about it, right? And then Amazing Spider-Man 347 sold for 38. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man 351 sold for 35, okay, and 360 sold for 34. Oh, and all these are going to the same buyer. Oh no, no, what the, the 344 went someone else, uh, and the person has been buying a few of these. Okay, Amazing Spider-Man. We can crunch these number. The the crazy thing, the 360, Amazing. Amazing Spider-Man, sorry, Amazing Spider-Man 359 and 360, a couple of years ago, you could have bought them for less than $10, right? Because of the Venom movies coming out and, and whatnot, they're, they've kicked up in value big time, big time. I don't know what their going rate is really right now. Uh, I 
think that's fair value for them. If log a x equals k, what is log squared? Squared. So I'm assuming you shouldn't have a bracket between those. Square. Uh, oh, that's the base. Is that supposed to be the base? That's supposed to be the base. So let me write this down. I, I'm assuming this is what you're writing. Log a x. If log ax is equal to k, right, is log, what is log, log square root of ax equal to, right? That must be it. So how do we do this? Let me think about this. So basically, we want to find out what A is. Do, 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 is that what we want to do? We want to find this box. You're kicking me straight into grade 12. <laughs> Let me think about this. What's the best way of approaching this? We could figure out what A is. Sometimes when you're doing mathematics, the best thing to do is just start messing around with it. Right? Oops. I lost the chat. So I'm just going to start messing around with it until we get to the right approach of solving this thing, right? So, I'm going to find out what that is. Um, oh, we can do this. Check this out. Uh, the best way to approach it is this, right? So, there's a rule in logs where it says log, log AB, right, can be written as log B over log A, right? with whatever base you want here. And usually you just leave it as base 10 and you don't bother writing uh, the base 10 here. Let me write this a little bigger. And hopefully we're not gonna, I think I need to stand in front of the whiteboard a little bit for the camera not to go out of thing. So the rule in log, let's write it up here. There's a rule in log that says log A, B, and A and B can be anything. If you want, we can use X and Y so we don't get confused with well, not X and Y, let's go M and N, because we don't have M and N here, right? So M, N can be written as log, whatever base you want, as long as it's the same, M over log box N, and those have to be the same. But if they have to be the same in general, we'll put another variable in there, right? Let's call it Z. I don't know if this is naming convention proper or not, Usually M and N used for the base actually. But whatever. I'm gonna call this Z. Z and Z. That means they have to be the same. So basically it's telling you if you got log X over square root of A, this guy you can write as I'm just gonna simplify it in this direction. Log X over log square root of A. Right? That is that. Okay. Now, there's another rule in logs that says this. Here, we'll do the exponent rule first, right? Because this is layered. By the time you get to here, you're, there's the assumption, rightfully so, that you should know how to deal with powers and radicals, right? Exponents and radicals. And we've got a whole series on exponents and radicals. We've talked a lot about this. If you check out the YouTube playlist for the math videos, I believe we did this in. Uh, series 2 back in 2009 and this has come up over the years multiple times in other language of mathematics videos we've done or ASMR math videos we've done. I think we actually have a one long ASMR math video where we've talked about exponents and radicals right and these are radicals. So radical rule says this square root of something is really a to a power of a half right all you do if you have the root of anything, let's call it mn. There, let's use mn again. Right? Let's erase this and do it this way. The m root of n can be written at n to the power of 1 over m. The m here just goes in the denominator in the power. Right? So this guy we can write as log x over 
log a to the power of a half. Okay. So that's not a log rule. That's an exponent rule. Okay. Now, there's a log rule that says this. Log rule says log of n to the power of m can be written as m log n. Okay. So if you have a log of a, anything to a power, that power can be brought down to the front. Make sense? So we can grab this guy and bring it to the front. So this can be written as log x over one half log a. Okay. One half log a. Okay. So what this really means is I'm gonna kick this up here because we don't need any more log rules. Uh, do we need any more log rules? Um, if we do, here, I'll, I'll leave a little blank here just in case there's another log rule that we have that we might need during the simplifying process. But from here, here, I'll go down one more here. From here, we could write this as this. There's an imaginary one here, right? Now, making this a little bit more complicated than it really is, just to put in the, the extra steps in there so you see what's going on in terms of the flow of logic. So this is 1 over 1 over 2, and this is log x over log a, right? 1 over 1 over 2. <laughs> here, we'll use this space here. 1 divided by 1 over 2. That's just 2, but let me show you, right? Whenever you have, it's like the previous question, whenever you have... Uh, fractions on top of fractions, do it sideways, lay it out sideways, right? So 1 divided by 1 over 2 is really 1 times 2 over 1, which is just 2. Right? So this guy becomes 2 times log x over log a. Right? Can you do you know the answer right now? It's only we're one, two steps away if you want to do every step, right? We basically finished the problem, right? But you have to finish it. You have to lay it down, right? If you take a look at this, where do we see this? Is there, here's the log rules. This is a log rule. And this is a log rule. Okay. That was an exponent rule, and that's just a division rule. And I'm calling these mascot Reagan, right? And I'm just I'm calling these rules, but they're not rules. They're just things that the language of mathematics says needs to be because that's what the symbols, the expressions tell you to do, right? Like a period in the sentence tells you the sentence has ended. The next letter in the sentence has to be capital, okay? And then you can start the next thought or whatever it is you're starting, right? Comma means something, colon means something. That's what these things mean. Now, if you take a look at this, log x over log a, well, that's this rule here, but going in this direction. Because the rules of mathematics, if you can go this way, you can go the other way, right? They're bi-directional, is that what we call it? Complementary, whatever it is, right? These go both ways. These go both ways. So if you have a number in front of a log, this guy can go up top as well, right? Well, this guy is log of m over log of n, m, x, and a, and that just becomes that. So this guy becomes two log base a of x. What's log base a of x? Well, log base a of x is k. So this just becomes 2k. Fun. Fun. So would there be a general rule 
that for a log base to a power, you can just multiply the log by the inverse of the power. You know what? For me, uh, Mask of Raven, there, there probably is, but I don't encounter these types of problems often enough to try to remember what they are, right? So for example, what if this was cubed here? Then you gotta actually multiply it by two over three. I don't wanna memorize it. I know the process of how to get the answer, right? So I just go through the process. If you were doing this, and here's the kicker, right? Always keep this in mind. All those shortcuts that they teach you in school, use those shortcuts if you have, or, and learn those shortcuts if you have 50 of the same question that they're gonna ask you. If you're gonna encounter one of these questions in one exam, right? It's not worthwhile trying to remember how it works because if you have a misfire, right? We're human beings. If you have a misfire during the day of the exam, right? Your neurons aren't firing at full capacity. You had something happen, bad day. You didn't have the right food. The day before you ate the wrong food or drank the wrong drink. You might not be functioning at 100% capacity for an important exam, right? Then your memory is the first place that fails you, right? Knowing how to do something stays with you, right? Really, it stays with you. So if you know the process involved in simplifying or answering this type of question, you don't have to memorize anything, special cases. You just go crunch, 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 right? Like for me, really, Mask of Raven, who, who asked this question, was it Mask of Raven? Yeah, Mask of Raven. For me, even the previous question, even the exp uh, uh, quadratic question, the first question that you ask Mask of Raven, right? For me, when I see a question, in general, unless at the beginning of years anyway, when I start, when the school years start, in general, it, my neurons don't fire right away and I know the answer right away or I know how to approach the answer right away. I write it down and I take a look, I go, exactly what we did. What's the best way of doing this? There's, looks simple enough, but the square root is, square root, right? Oh man, I gotta deal with the square root. And then you go, oh, there's, this is about logs. So what are the log rules? So I get my memory, my mind to, so first thing is doing is sorting through the data, sort, sorting through the visual that I see, right? And then the next thing I do, once I figure out what section I'm in or what type of process I'm talking about, what type of system we're, we're involved in, then I get my memory to access that database, right? And the database is the rules of the logs. That's all I really need to know, right? And all of these have derivations and stuff like this, but I could probably derive like two or three of the rules of logs. There's like eight of them or something. The other ones I would have to sit there and think and like, oh man, I just know it works. I'm not gonna bother trying to, or I would look it up, right? And then what I do with my memory, I access these rules. Okay, which rules apply here? Well, this is a log of something to different bases. So let's separate these. So you separate them. And then you separate them. You go, okay, what else can I do? Oh, I still have this radical here. I don't want to deal with the radical. Oh, radical. That's just an exponent. So you kick it up to the exponent. You go, oh, logs has a rule for exponents, which is if you got log of something to an exponent, you can kick it down. Oh, let's do that. Oh, nice. Look at this. That guy is really that guy. Oh, nice. So all I got to do is just deal with this guy. Right? And that's just fractions. Boop, 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 boop. Right? Sometimes I fail. I write down a problem and I go, Man, I can't remember how to do this. If I don't, I move on, but I keep this in mind. Maybe later on with some of the problems that they're, you're dealing with, all of a sudden you remember the approach you need to take to be able to solve this type of problem. Okay? It's really uh, 
the beauty of mathematics is uh, it's not about memorization. The beauty of mathematics is you just gotta just chill with it, right? They suck. Greetings, greetings. How are you doing? Hope you're having a great, great Wednesday afternoon, right? I haven't had time to go pick up my comic books today. I haven't had time to pick up my comic books today. Oh, oh. Hey, let's see. Did we sell anything? Oh, we sold two more. Let's see what else we sold. This data set is going in. Oh, wow. Amazing Spider-Man. So Amazing Spider-Man 361 went for 167. And this thing's been kicking up in price. Really. In the last, the last one we sold, which was... Uh, one grade lower well it was the same grade as this went for 102 this one went for 167 okay and during the last three months amazing spider-man 361 has been kicking up in price big time really it's been kicking up in price big time in the last year it's been going up through the roof and this all of this is because for the venom movie Okay, but not just because of that, the Venom movie really kicks things up, but Carnage is an amazing character. Some people will consider it to be the best villain in the Marvel Universe. Okay, greatest villain in the Marvel Universe. The other reason is they had, at the end of the Venom movie, they had, uh, what's the actor's name? Uh, oh, I forgot the actor's name. He does an appearance as Cletus Cassidy. I, we're not sure if that movie is going to go through because Disney and, uh, Disney and Sony have separated, parted ways in regards to Spider-Man, but I don't know if Sony holds the rights to make Venom and Carnage movies or Disney has the right to make Venom and Carnage movies. Maybe it's shared, right? But we're going to see a lot more of Carnage. Hopefully. There's a lot of Carnage fans out there going, man, we want to see more carnage. We want to see more carnage. Fun. Very exciting. Amazing time to be part of the uh, comic book industry. And there was actually a reseller that was bidding the Amazing Spider-Man 361 higher and higher. Eh? They wanted to get their hands on this. It's, just, it's a pretty sweet look. This is a pretty nice book. Oh yeah, they were kicking it up. I'm glad the person that got it, got it. That's a given. Okay. Uh, because they've been waiting for this one. Uh, there was a couple of people waiting for these actually. Uh, so I'm glad at least uh, one of the people that was uh, trying to get these got them, really. That's good. That's good. Fun. Got to love that, man. When we start crunching these numbers, I don't know how deep we're going to go into it, but we might go pretty deep. Depends on... Uh, I might do a short video on it first because I'm just getting back into the editing videos with the new hard drive. Well, not the new hard drive, the older hard drive that I just used as backup that hasn't had too much read and write on it. Uh, so that should last us a while, hopefully. At some point, I'm going to do a serious upgrade. And really, we'll, we'll go through the whole process. We'll make ASMR videos and share as much as we can what we're setting up and how we're going to go about doing this stuff. And we're going to get a bigger whiteboard to do, to do large mathematics. Right. Fun. I'm going to take this down. I'm going to take this down. By the way, Mask of Raven, I'm glad you were uh, kept on asking about when we're going to start mathematics. I'm glad we started it sooner than later. I'm loving this. Awesome. Awesome. I'm going to grab a seat on the stool for now. Questions coming in. Ooh, hopefully that wasn't too loud for you guys. Sorry about that. I'm squished in here a little bit. RP 
people in school right now? Yeah, some people are just getting off school, I guess, eh? Yeah, I actually set this up during the, what do you call it, the school time, right? So I guess we'll have to start setting up, setting these things up uh, later in the evening where people uh, that are going to school, high school specifically, high school, elementary school, um, I'm assuming there isn't too many elementary school people here, but uh, on Twitch anyway, um, but people who are taking high school math or, or college or university, uh, as long as it's basic non-calculus related. Deal with it. So, do it later on in the evening so they'll be out of school. Maybe start doing these things uh, on the weekends because that way, uh, weekend during the days, that way, if people need to work, uh, need to uh, be free to be able to pop in and do a little mathematics. I just got home from the first day of the university. Nice. First day of university, what a trip that is, eh? Seriously, that's what we First day of university, I remember my first day. Do I remember my first day? I don't know. I did, I did three rounds. Uh, I did one university and I went to a college and then I went to a different university. Um, and through each one, I was in a different state of mind, right? So, uh, which university are you in, Master Ray? Are you in the States or uh, Canada or I think you're in the States. Well, first day of third year, but restarting with a new degree. Oh, what are you going into? If you're going to mathematics, you better start doing some Twitch. Ottawa, University of Ottawa. Ottawa, I've been there, interesting town. I did some work there, I did some geophysics there. Mathematics, <laughs> of course. Awesome. <laughs> your future is bright brother your future is bright and basically in about a few months you're going to know more you'll be able to teach us a lot of mathematics really uh, you must be taking calculus discrete mathematics linear algebra uh, and most likely stats as well i'm assuming one year one year of university to be able to get my math minor I took four math courses, right, uh, in one term. And one of them I had no right to take because I didn't have the prerequisite for it. It was uh, applied mathematics second second year, but the uh, in the second term that they offered, so it was the advanced version. That, without a doubt, my hardest term in university that blew away all the other terms really like it was three times more work than all the other terms where i was taking either five or six courses sometimes four but usually five courses average right i took four math courses and i was doing at least twice as more work two three four times more work and that was a oof, that was a load that was heavy duty heavy duty I had uh, what did I have I can't remember what I had I had applied mathematics statistics uh, I can't remember I can't remember I can't second year calc I believe yeah second year calc uh, applied mathematics statistics I didn't take the linear algebra until the following year so I can't remember Mathematics, you could you could go in any direction you want. Which direction do you want to go in, Master Verga? What are you interested in? Computer engineering, electrical engineering, heavy, heavy mathematics, right? Heavy mathematics. Uh, business is just straight up math, really. And some understanding of how the system is, uh, where the loopholes in the system are, right? If you're willing to play the game, right? Make profits. Fun. Oh, we had another one go. What was the last one? Yeah, that one. Wow. 
Amazing Spider-Man 363 went for 51. Wow. Someone was looking at it. He's kicking it up. Some of these things are going for heavier prices, man. This carnage is getting some serious... Uh, I've been tracking this as well, just just to see what was going on, right? Uh, and uh, it's incredible how fast the market is moving right now. It's incredible, really. Uh, not, and not just on the comic book front, on the stock market, on the crypto front. Like cryptocurrencies right now, Bitcoin, really, this this is, if, if you appreciate this, Master Raven, the dream is pure math that's a long shot i'm thinking comp side or stats might be more secure and fun uh, yeah stats uh, computer science uh, would be fun if uh, well i don't want to all of it could be very interesting depending on which branch you go down right pure mathematics is 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 a world on its own right it could be a lonely place i think and it could be filled with tremendous amount of challenges uh, i've known people in the pure mathematics realm and once they got their degree in pure mathematics uh, they had a choice their bachelor's degree in pure mathematics they could have gone in the direction of um, getting their master's and phd in pure mathematics and they would uh, or they had a choice of going into electrical engineering and they had offers from both realms right this one person that i knew and uh, after thinking about it for a while, they went in, into the realm of electrical engineering. And they did like it, but there was more politics involved. In pure mathematics, it was, there was a certain amount of peace and brilliance involved in it. I don't know enough math to know for sure. Yeah, Mask of Raven, uh, it, yeah, at some point, brother, at some point, I would love to go back to university and start learning or teach myself right start learning more advanced mathematics and i've told myself i'm going to do that once i finish uh, all the content that i want to create for high school mathematics right because after that the only logical choice for me would be if i want to continue this and i do i can't see myself not wanting to it would be for me to go back and relearn the mathematics that I knew at university, which is calc minor in mathematics, put it that way, right? And that will, and while I'm learning it, create videos and content to teach it, because I'm hoping a lot of that stuff will be triggered again, right? I'll remember the things, and I have all, most of the books here, all the books here that I use, and then continue my studies, right? I would love to get into coding and learn uh, certain things about solomon codes and um, security uh, explore prime numbers a little bit discrete mathematics and just communication secure communication uh, both on a uh, on a personal uh, a personal level as a uh, anyway it's a long story as well as on a political economic front because i believe in uh, in the mantra right now in the realm of uh, well whatever you want to call it the mantra that has been said that uh, security privacy uh, freedom liberty should not be something that is brought into uh, law it shouldn't be something that is given to us from the top down it should be by design and the only way that stuff can be made by design is through the realm of mathematics right so if you have the right right code right mathematics when you're rolling out forms of communication transactions just being and interacting uh, 
within our societies, if you have by design privacy and liberty in there, then no centralized power can ever take that away from you. Right. <laughs> that's, that's my thing. Uh, I don't know if I'll ever get there, but I like talking about it. I like talking about it. And I'm way... There's a, long, there's a long way for me to go to get there yet. Right? But I'm going to try to push as many people in that direction as possible. <laughs> Mathematics. Teach as much math as you can. Right? Teach as much, as much math as you can. For me, anyway. You got me all excited talking about math. Fun. Fun, fun. Can't wait to put these numbers in a spreadsheet. Do you use Tor uh, I, I2P? Uh, not Tor uh, I2P or P2P or I2P is what? I do P2P, oh, oh, what do you call it? You're talking about uh, VPN, right? I2P, going through VPN. What's I2P? These acronyms throw me off. I2P. I2P, the Invisible Internet Project. No, I haven't gotten there yet. It's an anonymous network layer that allows for censorship resistant peer-to-peer -peer communication. Bravo is a browser that offers that, yes? Um, this sock. Is Bravo one of the browsers that offers that thing? Uh, I2P. Uh, the one reason I haven't gone into this stuff is because of um, of my hardware limitations right now. I need to upgrade. My main priority has been to create content, right? And I haven't tried to put any extra strain on the hardware that I've had to to prevent me, you know, to hinder. Uh, the progress that we have to to limit the progress that we have right one of the reasons is because i work my computers to the bone right one of my hard drives giving out is one of the examples uh, you know one of the things that happens but as soon as i do the system upgrade i'm going to dedicate a uh, tour station now i'm going to look more into the in, invisible uh, net as well you should take a look at the applied cryptography book by schneer didn't mean to make that a question. Okay, sure. Uh, this sock, can you, if you, if you're on Discord, if you could put this uh, name of this book in our book uh, folder, that way I'll know to look it up. And it's an archive. That way, sometimes I go through those folders and I look up to see what people recommend it. And then I, because I, I can't check out everything, uh, but I use it in an archive. I go in there and look up what, even music. What people have recommended and i either grab the books which i have i bought a couple of books that people have recommended and, and whatnot uh, that'd be great if you're not on discord let me know and i'll try to keep in mind to uh, make a note of this okay um, uh, oh one thing i was going to mention uh, you brought a cryptography that we brought up cryptocurrencies cryptocurrencies check this out right six months ago six to a year ago six months ago really six months ago six to eight months ago bitcoin was 50 percent of the market value of all cryptos right 50 percent eight months ago bitcoin was 50 percent of the market cap of all the cryptos and there's over two thousand cryptos right uh, last i checked so two thousand plus cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin uh, had a hold on 50% of that market, right? Right now, Bitcoin holds 70% of the crypto market. That is a huge move. That is equivalent to what people are talking about. Whenever you're talking about personal finance, investing, economics, and stuff like this, you also have to consider the currency that you're in, right? So this is... A, it's analogous to it, it's not exactly the same, but it is analogous to it, right? So Bitcoin has seen an influx of 20% more of the market into it 
relative to eight months ago. That could mean multiple things, right? But two of the things you can consider is this. Either Bitcoin is overvalued and the other altcoins are undervalued and they're going to do a move soon to bring that ratio of Bitcoin to 50% again. You sort of have to look at the historic price of Bitcoin. You, this is why mathematics is brilliant, right? If you take a look at the averages of cryptocurrencies, let's assume crypto has been around, let's say, 2009, 2008, 2008, 9, let's say Bitcoin's been around, right? 2009, 10, I guess. So let's say 10 years, right? If over a 10 year period, Bitcoin, well, initially for the first few years, Bitcoin would have been 99% of the market, 100% of the market, right? And then Litecoin kicked in and whatnot, da, 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 right? But let's assume in the last five years, Bitcoin was retaining 50% of the market share for all cryptos, of all the cryptos, and right now it has 70% of market share, right? During the last few months, that's either a breakout and a complete readjustment of the market, like the uh, basically the dot com burst in uh, 1999, 2000, or it's uh, what the term is uh, foreshadowing what the altcoins are going to do or the altcoins are foreshadowing what bitcoin's going to do which is bitcoin will come down to 50 percent. so there's so many different ways you can read this data read this analysis and if you know mathematics if you know your stats you can write programs or use programs or create graphs and charts and stuff like this to play the market accordingly if you're into that thing I just like sometimes talking about why it's important to do certain things, right? Why, how mathematics can be used for some of these things. And here's a kicker. The math, these drop-in math theory sessions, sessions that we put out, they get the, they're usually on the low end as how many, of how many viewers we get, right? But literally, these are the most important streams that we do because it's mathematics. It covers all the other things that we're doing. May it be politics, economics, comic books, cooking, okay. <laughs> whatever it might be, the foundation of these mathematics, right? Brilliant, love it. By the way, there's uh, other people a couple of people subbed to me recently that uh, through Twitch that are actually doing uh, live stream math tutoring sessions. And I'm so happy to see that. So I think if you start looking around on Twitch, if you need specific type of tutoring, math tutoring sessions, more frequent than what I'm doing, there's gonna be people around that are doing math sessions as well. Uh, so look around, I haven't done any looking around, I've just, notice who's sub to me that has started doing this and love it love it love it i'm so glad that people are offering this well math is the universal language 100 percent the universal language right the language that i use use the most between humans and humans humans and machines and machines and machines and some people say no it's not the most used between humans and humans I go, absolutely it is. There's a foundation, the language that's used, the common language that's used between all human beings. Because when people are talking, I don't care what they're talking about, there's gonna be numbers, percentages, stats, data, ratios in there somewhere, okay? I'd love to do HS, calculus, number theory, linear algebra streams like this. But I'm not good under pressure or on camp. Mask of Raven, La Vie, how you doing? Welcome to a mass stream. Salutations. Mask of Raven. Okay. Check out my first, I'll find it for you. Well, there's only one way to get over that. Let me show you. Let me show you. Chicho. Oh, yeah, I should just go over here. I'll go to my YouTube channel. And I'll grab you my first video that I put out when I 
put these videos together. Okay. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -ba. Create a playlist. So where is the language of mathematics? Let's find the language of mathematics. Where is my language of mathematics? Where are the language of mathematics? It's the first playlist I created. Whoops, I want to start it all up. I want to go to the playlist. View full playlist. Oh, crap. Stop. This is the first video I ever put out where I was in front of the camera. Okay. You tell me. You tell me. This was, this was 2007, okay, 2007, dude, I was nervous, right, I just learned how to edit through, I was editing on a crappy little HP computer that I had that I would never ever 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 get again an HP computer <laughs> it took me forever I didn't know how to do lighting camera it was little v, uh, VS VH HB tapes little mini tapes I was taping on no sound system anything like this brother if I can do it anybody can do it much darker beard <laughs> most definitely 2007 12 years ago right well there's only one way to get over that one way to get over that i have to get back to work have a good one youtube this sock thanks for popping by thanks for popping by right so that's my first math video since then math video wise we probably have like 300 plus math videos uh, over 700 plus videos uh, it feels good brother really it feels good uh, sharing information especially sharing things that i love being math centric okay uh, i can honestly tell you it's, it's a good feeling and it's well worth trying you don't need to uh, stick to it right we have 750 videos right it doesn't have to be everything you do or dominant force but if we, you would like to do it i would love to do hs calculus number theory linear algebra streams like this but i'm not good under pressure or on camera if you would love to do something like that you only live once man get her done really get it done try it out it's uh, uh people are gonna call you out people are gonna make fun of you people are gonna laugh at what you do they did to me so, uh, but at the same time you get people that give you support love what you're doing thank you a gazillion times I can't explain to you how many, like, I, don't, I have no idea how many thank you messages I've received over the last 12 years of doing this, right? That is worth all the flack you might be getting. And it actually, the flack you get, gets you a little bit of thicker skin, right? Gets you a little thicker skin and you start appreciating life a lot more exactly Olivia yeah. Yeah. really you start appreciating life a, a lot more because uh, you're on a path that you love like really and there's something to be said about uh, love being sent your way mask of raven I kid you not when you're down and everybody goes through ups and downs right when you're down I can't even tell you how many times where I've had a you know, rough day or a rough week or a rough month or a rough whatever it is and then all of a sudden someone sends me a message like I read it and I'm like Phew. 
right? Wow. And then I, jeez. And I go to my notes and figure out what I've laid out to do and I start doing like mass videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It pumps you up. It pumps you up. It's amazing. I'll watch. I guess the second day of school starting, people aren't really too much into doing mathematics. <laughs> we did some good math today, man. We did some good math today. Right? We did some great math today. Fun. Should I tell you what, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Oh, I don't have the spreadsheet here. Do I have the spreadsheet here? No, I don't have the spreadsheet here. It's on the other computer. I haven't loaded the spreadsheet on this one. Fun. No, I don't have it here. So we can't crush the numbers alive, unfortunately. Could you explain how to do synthetic polynomial division? I can do long division, but I forget synthetic. Yeah, for sure, synthetic division. Here, check this out. Synthetic division is just a shorter version of the long division. Uh, uh, sort of, a, it's not a cheat, but it's, here, you can do polynomial long division like this. Well, we won't even bother doing polynomial long division. Let's just do from synthetic long division. Right? Let's assume you have this. 5x to the power of 4 plus 7x cubed minus 2x uh, plus 1, right? Oh, divided by, let's, let's keep it simple. Let's just say x minus 3. No, uh, x minus 3, x plus 2, okay? Let's make this a, a 6, okay? So... You lay it out, if you're doing long division, this is the way you would lay it out, right? You would go x plus 2, and then you would go 5x to the power of 4 plus 7x cubed minus 2x plus 6, right? And then you go, what do you multiply x by to give you 5x to the power of 4? You lay them down, you go like this, right? Which is legit, it's not, it's not bad, and it's a good way to do it. Sometimes I do it this way, right? If you do a synthetic long division, you do this. You say x plus 2 really means x plus 2 is equal to 0, which is x is equal to negative 2. So you're going to go x is equal to negative 2. You're going to rem remember that this is x plus 2. Okay. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take the coefficients in front of the variables and the constant term and just lay those out. Forget about the x's or anything. The only thing you have to keep track of is these guys have to go sequentially down. So if this is x to the power of 4, that's x to the power of 3, we're missing x to the power of 2. So you're going to put a 0 as a place marker for x to the power of 2. So you're going to take the coefficients here. You're going to go 5, 7. x to the power of 2 is not there, so you're going to go 0. And then you remember that the sign in front of the number always goes with the number. So that's not a 2, that's a negative 2 negative 2 and then you're going to get a 0 okay and then what you do is this synthetic long division you're going to bring this guy down 5 is that the way to do it yeah <laughs> sometimes i'll have to look this up right and then you're going to go this times this and you're going to bring it here so this guy goes here but it multiplies negative 2 on its way so whatever was here you multiply it whatever's going up that way, right? So five times negative two is negative 10. And then you're gonna add these guys, you're gonna get negative three, okay? And then you're gonna take this, take it up there, multiply it by negative two, you get six, add in, you get six. This guy goes there, multiplies negative two, you get negative 12, add in, you get negative 14. This guy goes up, multiplies by negative two, it becomes 28, right? And then you add them, you get uh, 34, right? So what you ended up with is this. 
Because you just take, took x to the power of 4 and divided out in x, I, I hope I did this right. Okay. I have a just, I'm putting a disclaimer out there because um, I'm 95% sure I did it right. But I'll put, I'll put a disclaimer out there. If you go Chicho Long Divi Synthetic Division, you'll find a whole bunch of videos we've laid out, right? But basically what happens is, you had x to the power of 4, you took out an x. So the this guy, these guys here, are 5x cubed minus 3x squared plus 6x minus 14. Okay. This guy here is the remainder. And the remainder is what the y value would be if this was a function. It's if just this top guy was a function, if you plug in x is equal to negative 2, it would equal 34. So this is really a representation of a point on this function, not this not included. When x is negative 2, y is 34. Okay, that's what you're really finding. You're finding a point. And if that was 0, it would mean this is a factor of that, right? And we'll do a test to make sure we did this correctly. There's a way to do this is where they say, oh, write down your division statement. Your division statement will be this. This divided by this, oops, 5x to the power of 4 plus 7x cubed minus 2x plus 6 divided by x plus, oops, 2 is equal to this plus 34 over x plus 2. And then if you multiply everything by x plus 2, what you end up getting is this. 5x to the power of 4 plus 7x cubed minus 2x plus 6 is equal to x plus 2 times 5x, because x plus 2 multiplies everything as a common denominator in the whole equation. Right? x cubed minus 3x squared plus 6x minus 14 plus 34. Some people consider this to be the division statement. Some people consider this to be the division statement. The meaning of this division is if you take x is equal to negative 2 and sub it into this function, then the remainder 34 is really a point on the function. right? That's what we've done. Now, if we want to do a check, just to make sure we did this correctly, I can do this with function that we know the factor of. So we could say, hey, what's x squared plus 5x plus 6 divided by x plus 2? Right? Can you see that? Hopefully. Let's make this a little bit bigger. Let's make this a little bit bigger. Um, what are we doing? Oh yeah, x, not to the power of 5, x squared, x squared plus 5x plus 6 divided by x plus 2. And that's one thing I do in mathematics. If I want to make sure I did something complicated correctly, I use the same process for something simple that I know the answer of, right? So if we're doing this division, it means there's an imaginary one there. So you, and this means x equals negative 2, right? So you're going to go x is equal to negative 2. You're going to synthetically divide that into 1. 5 and 6 and x is equal to negative 2 means x plus 2 so we're seeing if x plus 2 is a factor of this and when it's a factor of it if the remainder is 0 it means that's where it crosses the x-axis right if this was 0 then when x was negative 2 this function would have crossed the x-intercept right so this becomes 1 1 times negative 2 is negative 2 add them together you get 3 3 times negative 2 comes up here Right? becomes negative 6 and you get 0. Oh, the remainder is 0, which it should be. Which means if you take this function divided by x plus 2, then the remainder is 0. So it says this is a, an x-intercept. So if you plug in x is equal to negative 2 here, you get 0. f of x would be 0. The y would be 0. And the other factor would be x, 1x plus 3, which it is. Right? If you factor this guy, 
x squared plus 5x equals 6 is x plus 2 times x plus 3. Ta-da! You're done. Right? You could write this as a division statement like this and like this and whatnot. Right? You could take it from there. Hopefully that was a good reminder for you. Uh, I tried to uh, cover, uh, what do you call it? <laughs> cover some of the concept behind it. But we do have like a huge, huge series on that. X, how are you doing? How is life? Hope you're doing well. Fun. You're catching us in the last few minutes of, uh, of a math live stream. Our first math live stream for the 2019-2020 school year. Yeah, fun. I wonder how many will get done this year. I don't know. I definitely want to do marathon session, drop-in math tutoring marathon session. Uh, by that time, hopefully, during exam time anyway, uh, by that time, hopefully, I'll set something up and we've got a gigantic board. And maybe we'll do, uh, we'll try to break our record of the longest live stream we've done. We did a six, six and a half hour making crab apple live stream, right? I think six and a half hours. Maybe we'll set one up for a seven hour math drop in tutoring session or an eight hour one by that time my voice might give away or after eight hours uh, it will i can't do eight hours of talking but maybe we'll figure something out maybe we'll play some old videos and then we'll do it live and then ask questions that would be great actually today for these four hours we're going to go through series one of the language of math adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. And then we'll kick it up into series two, exponents and radicals, dealing with fractions, prime factorization. Those are series one, actually. Dealing with radicals, exponents are series two. Functions, graphs, and stuff with series uh, 3a and b. Ratios, series four. That'd be fun. I won't have time to go pick up my comic books today, man. Or tomorrow. Oh no! Oh no! I might be missing out on something large. What? I might be missing out. But it's worth it. For mathematics, we'll skip a Wednesday of picking up comic books. Yeah? I think so. I think so. For mathematics, we're willing to do a few, few things. Few things. Should we call the stream game? This was good. This was a good way to break things in. A little bit less than two hours, but that's okay. I got some blackberries to mill and jar. And I got a uh, whole bunch of shish kebabs to make. If I get into it, uh, no, we're not gonna do, I'm not going to do another live stream later uh, to make the shish kebabs. I got I to do a fair bit of prep. And, Organized thing and stuff. We're doing our first legit barbecue tomorrow with a whole bunch of friends coming over. I'm gonna feed them Armenian Persian style of uh, chicken kebabs and beef ground beef kebabs, like hamburger style, not hamburger. If you speak Farsi, juje kebab or kubide. Kubide is ground shish kebabs and uh, or ground kebabs and uh, chicken. Juje means chicken. Mm, can't wait. Can't wait. Can't wait. I hope you guys are having a fantastic Wednesday. I hope you guys continue to have a fantastic Wednesday. Mask of Raven, thank you very much for the questions and interaction. It was fun. This stock is gone. Uh, thank you for the questions that you had. Livia, thank you for popping in. Casey was here for a bit, intrepid, double and negative, sneaky walrus, perps, dice power, dice power, fun, bizarre, lions, nice, these chill, low, low view streams are pretty nice and uh, relaxing, you don't get troll action or anything, that's fantastic, okay gang, I hope you have a fantastic, next few days um, 
I don't think I'm gonna be setting up any live streams until next, not this weekend, the following weekend, right? So it's gonna be about a 10 day break. Uh, I got students to deal with. Gonna have to watch the VOD video upload. Uh, have a good one, you show YouTube X, YouTube X. Lots of love, Lydia, lots of love. Hope you have a fantastic evening. Taco, how you doing? We're just about to end the stream. We did some nice mathematics. And we watched some of the comic books sell on eBay. Well, not watched, but tracked some of the comic books sell on eBay. We sold all the first Carnage appearances of Amazing Spider-Man. Very cool, very cool. Very cool. Important books. Beautiful books. Beautiful books. Uh, so in about, uh, I'm assuming by Monday, I'll have our next schedule up for the following weekend. And the odds are we'll probably do, no, what day are we, what day is it going to be? Probably the next streams are going to be uh, maybe s starting September 13th or 14th. Sorry for the long delay, but it just has to be. Uh, it just has to be. I might try to do one or two maybe one random over the weekend i'll see i'll see what i'm up to uh, okay aside from that thanks for being here again i hope you have a fantastic next few days okay. bye for now